Hi guys, this is gsn1.com and I'm here with the review of the TP-Link Nephos X1 handset. This one is a mid-range metal phone on a budget and we've already reviewed the TP-Link Nephos C5 Max, we're familiar with the brand. This one was unveiled last fall and uh, it's priced at around $200, maybe less. And as you know, TP-Link is the biggest router maker in the world, so their name to respect. Now, design-wise, we're dealing with a compact device. It's got a 5-inch uh, screen here and also a very very compact body when you hold it it's incredibly light well actually on paper it's 135 grams but to me it feels like 100 grams even so very well balanced so around it metal back some uh, plastic lids here from what i can see for the sake of signal there's a very zte axon vibe going on here and it's a well-built phone with a 2.5d glass panel that's not too shabby looking but in the end we've seen its format before it's rather generic I'm happy with the way you can use the phone with a single hand, that's one of its major advantages. Now, on the display front we get a 5 inch IPS LCD panel with 720p resolution and it's time to put it to the test with our videos app. So this is our test video, so here we go. We're dealing with a pretty bright screen I would say, with vivid colors, not oversaturated and also not bland, wide view angles. So everything checks out. Some good colors, good brightness and good contrast. And now it's time to see how the screen did in our usual tests. So first things first, we go here and see how the screen looks like under the microscope. We got an RGB stripes pixel set up here. And then we measured the brightness, achieving several values. The biggest one of them is 396 lux units, which is quite okay for a mid-range phone. It surpasses the Asus Zenfone Max and the LG G5, but scored below the Huawei Mate S and the Lenovo Vibe X3, for example. Now, if you want to tweak the screen experience further, you go here. And to the display section, we got adaptive brightness, brightness level, wallpaper, color temperature with a slider for warmer, standard or cooler. And then we have an LED indicator, font size, auto rotate, and that's about it. And by the way, you should better keep this auto rotate on because it's useful. So a pretty good screen for the price. And now it's time to talk about the other aspects of the hardware. I'm going to start with the CPU, very familiar, is the MediaTek Helio P10. We've seen it on all view phones, seen it on the Sony Xperia XA. It's an octa-core chip and it comes with uh, two or three gigabytes of RAM. We have the two gigabyte RAM version. Um, and that's an annoying ad in this app, which I'm waiting to finish, by the way, not a very good game, this one. Okay, so as I said before, we have the 2GB RAM version and there is also 16 or 32GB of storage and a micro SD card slot. In my experience with the phone, using it for a couple of days, every time you open an app or try and do something, there will be no lag. I'm happy with the time it takes to open an app and I'm happy with using apps from the queue with zero problems. So no problem with the lag that's a nice thing to have here and uh, we also did fine in gaming riptide gp renegade is our benchmark game and for a two gigabyte ram phone not bad i would say not bad of course the gpu is a bit on the old side is the mali t860 mp2 and here we go here we have the quick race pick this one continue and here we go Loaded reasonably fast, the water is looking nice, I can spot no lag and no delay. Responsive controls, good frame rate, lighting, shadows, textures, so everything kind of checks out. Some pretty nice maneuvers. So if you're planning on doing some casual gaming, you'll be happy with the phone. Now, we also did a bunch of benchmarks and I'm happy to show them to you. Let's see them. We got quite a few screenshots, but it's safe to remember that we did Quadrant, and in Quadrant we scored above the Huawei P10 Lite and above the Verni Tor, but below the LED TV One S. Now, in Antutu 6, this is the score, and it's not very impressive. We beat stuff like the Motorola Moto G5 and the Samsung Galaxy A5 2016, but scored below the Moto M and the Huawei Honor 7. Now, the underwhelming part happened in the graphical benchmark 3D Mark iStorm Unlimited. Everything that's below 10K is underwhelming. And here we scored below the Nubia N1 and the Galaxy A5 2016, but below the Moto G4 and Moto G5. In many of the tests, even though it has the same specs as the Sony Xperia XA, it scored below it. Okay, now let's see how we did with the temperature test. We go here, 
these are the values we achieved 36.8 or 37 degrees Celsius and also 33.3 degrees Celsius in GFX Bench and Riptide GP Renegade and this means we have no overheating. Ok, so now it's time to discuss the battery, we're dealing with a 2250mAh unit here, it's supposed to offer us 50% charge with a 30 minute juicing up, and we of course did a bunch of tests, and let's see what those showed. As usual, we did the HD video playback test in a loop, and we achieved a value of... Let's see, so we scored 8 hours and 23 minutes of continuous HD video playback which is rather ok, not impressive for sure but ok for a 200 bucks phone. It beats the Sony Xperia Z5 and Huawei Mate S but scores below the Xiaomi Mi 4i and Galaxy A5, the first one. In PC Mark, the continuous usage test, we scored 6 hours 41 minutes which is once again not very impressive but for a mid-ranger we'll live with it. Now it's above the Huawei P9 Lite and above the LG Nexus 5X, so that's not bad, but it scores below the Huawei P10 Lite and the Verni Tor. The charging required us 2 hours and 22 minutes, which is reasonable and equal of the Huawei Nova Plus. We did a step-by-step -step charging, so 5 minutes 5%, 15 minutes 15% and 30 minutes 28%, not the 50% promised here, and 1 hour 54%. Settings for the battery. These include a battery saver mode with smart power saving and ultra power saving which this one also cuts the connectivity by the way. We got app standby management, apps power saving and overall I would say it's a let's say reasonable battery but not more than that. Now moving on to the acoustics, we have two grills here, only this one actually covers the speaker, this one is for the sake of design. Now um, uh, interestingly the music app wasn't able to spot the songs. For some reason we copied some songs onto the device so we have to go here and listen to them to them however we have to go back to show you the equalizer so we got a pretty stock equalizer you can activate it use genre setting five custom channels bass boost and surround sound i'm going to leave it like this and go back here to actually listen to music Conclusions, I would say that the volume is pretty loud, it's also a pretty clear sound or distortion, uh, small vibration on the backside, an ok bass and good high notes. Now we did some decibel meter testing and let's see what resulted from that angle. We'll go to download here and we got the following results, so 82.5 decibels were achieved, uh, the front and the back, and I would say this is a not very impressive result, it beats a few other mid-rangers but doesn't score very high, it's below the LG G4 for example, but beats let's say several old Xperia, so I was expecting a bit more here, the other result is quite good though, this one is in Riptide GP Renegade, 97.2 decibels. It beats the Galaxy S8 actually, Samsung Galaxy S8, so that's pretty impressive. Now, when I first saw the headphones of this phone in the unboxing, I was blown away. They're quite impressive, they're actually premium looking. Nice buds and I also tested them and I have to say they're comfy, they offer pretty good noise cancelling, they're loud, the bass is so so so. Aside from the bass, nothing to complain about and the design is not bad. The remote is kind of big, but they have this flat wire, like a noodle, which will not tangle, so that's nice. And by the way, those of you wondering, we also have FM radio here. Now, time to talk about the camera and see what we're dealing with. So, we're dealing here with a 13 megapixel back camera with dual LED, dual tone flash and a Sony IMX258 sensor, which was actually present on the OnePlus X and the Xperia XA, and at the front a 5 megapixel shooter for the selfies. Now, the actual camera experience, well, we have to do some cleaning first. The camera app starts up, I would say, reasonably fast, although in my previous experience it was kind of slow, and the options are rather limited, aside from HDR, some beauty features and only these modes, panorama time-lapse, camera and slow-mo, not much to write home, write home about, and that's all you get here, no trace of exposure, white balance and other things, I couldn't find them, here we have some filters and I'm actually shocked, there's no trace of those options, however you can download extra apps from the Play Store and that will be that. Now, 
let's go straight to the gallery no more chit chat and see how the camera did on a very fine summer day well actually not that fine it was a bit cloudy at some point now here we go those are the initial captures and i have to say that uh, we were able to pull off some pretty solid close-ups of flowers the colors felt a bit cold overall and the details were not half bad in the distance and in close-ups nice flower close-ups if you try to zoom in like we did with a certain flag at some point this flag here level one level two and the last level so zooming in results in serious detail loss now selfies were done and the skin feels a bit artificial feels dull like so i would say that the clarity is okay the lighting is okay but the texture of the skin is odd so maybe uh, tweak the face beauty or deactivate it completely if you like your narcissistic selfies to be perfect, well, you will like the dull look that this camera provides. Okay, back to the main camera, I have to say that the HDR makes things a bit too bright and I have to highlight again the really, really good flower close-up. So if you're the kind who takes flower close-ups and puts them on Facebook, you'll be happy. We also did a modest panorama of 6624 over 1840. That's the resolution and the details were not that good. Uh, it was also gently curved and not very clear. We played with the focus at some point. So let's find that shot here. So focus on this, on the background and on the foreground, alternate between them and that checks out nice. I was happy with the clarity and the color choice, although this HDR exaggerates a bit with the lighting, makes things a bit too lit. Overall, I would say it's pretty okay in clarity, colors and so forth, although I felt they were a bit cold. And I would put it on par maybe with the Huawei P9 Lite, the one from last year, or maybe the Verni Tor. And that's during the day. Now, let's see during the night what happened. I have a separate gallery for the low light capture. And surprise, surprise, it was actually quite good. Surprisingly clear, okay brightness, a bit of red or yellow tint. And what shocked me the most was the street light size. Usually phones tend to exaggerate the street light halos. This one doesn't. As you can see, quite impressive. Uh, not as much of a surprise as the LG Nexus 5X, but pretty close. As you can tell, the photos are quite yellow, but not as yellow as to say they're failed. They're quite okay. Nice building texture, great halo size, okay brightness, not bad colors. I would even say it can fight maybe the Huawei P10 Lite and the P9 Lite 2017 if it were to correct that red tint. And also, a special mention, it goes above the Motorola Moto M, if you really, really want a comparison. Now, in the video front, things aren't very peachy. Okay, so let's see why. We filmed in full HD, 3 GPP format, 30 frames per second and 70 mega per second bitrate. And the result looks like this. Okay, so at first sight you see that the colors are okay, we got good brightness and clarity, but let me tell you, the microphone is the best thing here. The images tend to be burnt, shaky, when you zoom in you lose a lot of details, things tend to feel more HD rather than full HD. At least we have the colors reasonably calibrated. Now let's see another video. This one here, for example, I have to say that the exposure is rather unsure, so when it changes, it's not very sure, it goes from bright to dark all of a sudden or too slow. We got some minor refocusing and the shakiness is totally annoying. You shouldn't pan too fast, otherwise you will wake up with some motion blur. So as you can tell, I'm not very happy with the filming. I was much happier with the uh, photo taking, that's for sure. And another sample during the day as well. Once again, shockingly good mic, but overall the video quality not impressive. I would say it's the older all view level and the slow-mo wasn't bad, we also have that, you'll see it in the full review. And the details in the distance are rather poor. It's okay for HD, not very okay if you are imagining a good full HD capture. Also below the Huawei Honor 7 and about on par with the Asus Zenfone 2. Now low light, you can basically forget about it, I was not happy with it, too yellow, too red too blurred, too moved, and only the microphone stands out here, and big street light halos, unlike the photos, also a bit laggy. Okay, so that's that with the camera, happy with everything minus maybe the low light capture, and on the browser front we got Chrome working for us, and let's start up gsmnome.com, here we go, 
not the fastest browser in the world, which is confirmed by the unimpressive result in Sun Spider. Still loading, wow. Okay, and now we swipe and scroll. And when it comes to the input, we got this stock virtual keyboard. And by the way, everything is rather stock here, plus or minus a few design tweaks. Now on the connectivity front, we get a micro USB port here. There's LT category four, GPS and GLONASS, dual nano SIM card slots here and more connectivity options are shown in this area so once again this is a dual sim phone dual sim dual standby with bluetooth 4.1 wi-fi abgn there's uh, support for 4g on both sims that's nice dual microphone and the uh, uh, dialer features a harassment filter this is it here now uh, we also have uh, done some calls and i have to say they're quite loud and clear the microphone was good and there was no problem with the noise so I would say pretty okay noise cancelling. It's time to check out the speed test. We did that on 4G and Wi-Fi. On 4G we went up to 40 mega per second downloads, 30 mega per second uploads, and on Wi-Fi 99 mega per second downloads, 25 mega per second uploads. So well within limits. Now when it comes to the OS, UI, and interface and other such things, here we go. Running on Android 6.0 Marshmallow with the Nefos UI 1.1. So basically they applied a sort of skin on top of Marshmallow, uh, many squares, many triangles, many straight angles, it's sort of like um, architectural design, so to say. Multitasking is done via carousel, drop down portion includes notifications and quick settings in stock manner. Keep the screen pressed for adjustment, widgets, wallpapers and transitions, widgets, those ones, pretty much stock plus or minus a few. Adjustment has to do with the icon size. Transitions, pretty straightforward. Okay, now uh, let's see what we're dealing with in the settings area. Go here and we got connectivity, we got sounds and vibration, do not disturb, display app, storage, smart settings, like button settings, capacity buttons, float button, double tap awakening, glove mode, and that's that. And then we have the fingerprint scanner. Yes, there's a fingerprint scanner here. And let's see what that is about. Fingerprint and encryption, screen lock, and here we go. Fingerprint management, secure it with a pin. Add a fingerprint, find the sensor at the back, and with about 10 presses or so, we should perform the setup faster than I've seen on other phones. And let's see just how accurate it is. We added the print. And check this out. I would say it's a reasonable unlocking time. Let's see it at 90 degrees. Reasonably fast. And 180 degrees fast again. So no problem in this area. Okay, now I want to talk about the applications here. As you can see, there's no app drawer. All of them are on the home screens. We got 32 pre-installed applications, not much bloatware. There are the Google apps. We got the Teams here. We got the weather app which is quite funky looking. We got notes, file manager, and a few tools like sound recorder, FM radio, calculator, feedback, and same toolkit and a compass. That's about it. So 32 is an okay number. Time for the pros and cons and the verdict for the TP-Link Nefos X1. So mid-range phone, it's got uh, a very, very light case and also quite comfy. And something I forgot to mention, actually, it's made to stand out by the fact it has a mute button. So you can actually push this button like back in the day the mute button well apple has been abandoning it or it's rumored to be abandoning it anyways you can find it on this tp link phone so mute button stands out back to the pros and cons so on the pro side very light and very comfy in your hand you can forget about it in your pocket or purse it's got a pretty okay display in my book and when i say okay i'm talking about its uh, brightness i'm talking about its colors i would say that the battery is also reasonable for a mid-ranger the volume output from this speaker is okay headphones are actually great i was surprised by the quality of the low light pictures that the camera takes i'm loving the ui even though we don't have android nougat and we don't have bloatware so that's a good thing now on the cons area the benchmarks and performance are unimpressive we don't have lag but it's also totally not future proof it's below the xperia xa i would say that the selfies felt artificial we have very few camera options the video capture was underwhelming and the fact that we have marshmallow is certainly not a compliment in the end this feels like a phone for people who like to take maybe facebook photos and casual gaming so that's about it 
people who want a very compact and light phone for Facebook and for casual gaming may want to buy this TP-Link phone. After all, TP-Link is the largest router maker in the world and if you like your router, you may just like this phone, at least for its incredibly compact design. Facebook phone and casual gaming. This is it from gsnone.com. Bye-bye.